Okay, so now at this point, you have experienced the joys of seeing a bright green pass and all these check marks and one one pass. I mean, this is a, a, an excellent driver of writing tests because when you see a bunch of red here, uh, it makes you want to fix it psychologically, right? So we have this basic hello function here. And this is all good in our app.js. It's simply just returning hello. Now, instead of just deleting this and deleting this other one, I'm going to sort of emulate a more real world situation where you're writing more tests, right? You're typically not just having one function, one test kind of thing. So what I'm going to do is have a new function here. And this is going to be a classic example. We're going to do const and this is going to be an add function, okay? So we're just going to be adding two numbers. So we're simply just going to have X and Y, right? Now, inside of this function, instead of just returning a string, we're going to return X plus Y, okay? So this is a little bit more involved than simply just returning a string here. Now, let's go ahead and write our tests. You'll notice that even when I save this file, it still says one of one is test passed because obviously we don't have any more tests for our add function. Let's head back to app.js and have a comma add. Now, what's cool about a function like this, you'll see in a second here, if you haven't gotten the point of why testing is excellent just yet, what we can do is actually test a whole bunch of things in here and make our functions more robust. Now, I'm going to have a new describe and a new it should, okay? So we're going to describe, again, this time we're going to describe, although this time we're going to describe add. Next, we're going to have an it. It should add two numbers. Seems a basic enough. Again, arrow function here. Okay. And now inside of here, we're going to call this with various numbers and expect to see the answers, right? So let's go ahead and do expect. And we could add in add one and two. And you would expect the results to be three, right? Notice how these aren't strings, obviously, okay? So we can save this, and you can see that it should add two numbers. We now get a green check mark. What happens if we actually duplicate this line? I did that by holding shift and option, hitting the down key in VS Code. And we were to say, hey, we expect two and two to be three. Now we get a big red error. And even though we had multiple expect lines, the add should add two numbers is still failing. So if either of these expects fails, then this whole it should fail. Okay, so you'll have different test cases within your it. And we have an expect should be a three, and then two plus two obviously shouldn't be three. Uh, so our test is incorrect here, not our actual function. But what's nice is that it, it points us right to line 12 as saying, hey, this is where to go. So obviously we expect two and two to be four. Now we can add some more things here, right? One of the cooler things about writing tests is that you can have a whole bunch of different test cases that might actually be able to uh, do more things than you would able to be doing manually testing this function individually, right? For instance, let's say if we added negative two and two together, we would expect the answer to be zero. So let's save this. And you can see they're all still passing. But instead of saying, you know, we have eight tests or however many I have here, five tests passing, it still says uh, one test suite, which is this page, and then two tests pass, as in it should output hello passes and it should add two numbers passes. But it's really great here. We can now test negative numbers. We can even test two negative numbers. We can do negative two plus negative two. And you can see uh, we are getting a big red error. It should be negative four. Four. Okay, so we could say, hey, this should be negative four. But either way, this gives us the option to be able to uh, have confidence that this thing is going to work under all test cases. Now, let's go ahead and actually write a new it should not add strings because this is actually an add numbers function, right? This is an add strings function. So now we can have another test in our test case here and we could say, uh, well, we expect, well, I don't know what we should expect because what were to happen if we were to add two plus the string of two? And if we save this, you can see it's obviously not negative four, but a string of 22 or a string of 
uh, adding two plus two. So in JavaScript, when you add two strings, it just sort of meshes the strings together, right? But if you have a number and you're adding it to the string, it actually uh, converts the number to a string, and now you have a string of 22. Now, this is wrong. We should not expect uh, this function to work. So let's write a failing test case, okay? We're going to say we expect that when you add two to a string, then the result should not be a string. It should be null, okay? And right now, obviously, this is going to fail. The expected value is null, and we receive 22. Because in our app.js, it's simply just concatenating, right? It's doing sort of basic JavaScript. So let's go ahead and add some if statements in here to sort of check. We're going to say if, and then type of x is equal to string, or uh, type of y is equal to string. Okay, so if either of these are equal to a string, then we're going to return null, okay? So if either of these are a uh, type of x is a string or a type of y is a string, we could save this. And now, check it out. Our test passes. But does this mean that uh, this function is robust or correct enough yet? N not necessarily, because check it out. I'm about to, uh, if you, you've either, you're either seeing this coming or you're about to have your mind blown a little bit. But if we uh, duplicate this, it should not add strings. What happens if we throw an object in here? It should not add objects, okay? And instead of number two here, we give this an, an object, okay? So this is sort of weird. We're adding in a two to an object, and, well, we're expecting it to be null because we don't have two numbers. We save this, and it breaks. Our test breaks. It should not be able to add two objects, but it is adding two objects, or it's adding a two to object. You can see we get a string with two and object object when we should be expecting null. And it illustrates some fragility inside of our actual app.js because uh, you might think that this is a good idea. Hey, we are testing to make sure these aren't strings, right? That's what we're, we're trying to do. But actually what we're looking to do is to make sure that these are numbers, right? Uh, so instead of adding another test case to make sure they're not objects or whatever, what we simply want to do is say if they're not a number and if type of y is not a number. We can see this, we can save this, and now all of our test passes because now regardless of what we do here, it should not add objects, it should not add arrays, okay? If we have an array in here, it doesn't matter what we have in here. Uh, if it's anything other than a number, we're going to be getting null. So let's talk a little bit about what we did in this video. We wrote a lot of tests, and you could see that while this function is still pretty basic, right, we did uncover some of the potential pitfalls of this function, right? Because you might always think in an ideal world, this function is getting two numbers, but you never know if the data coming out or in is going to be 100% ideal. Typically, when we're programming, we always work with the best case scenario sort of stuff. But in reality, the best case scenario stuff isn't always there. So we learned a few lessons here. It's easy to test a whole bunch of different types of values, right? We could even write a loop to test 100 different numbers if you wanted, but honestly, testing a few is uh, more than enough. Uh, but we were also able to test some things that were potential inputs to this function and make sure that the results were outputted as what we wanted to. And it made our function quite a bit nicer because now uh, nothing unexpected is going to happen. Okay, so again, this example might seem a little trite again because you're just simply adding two numbers. But as our code gets more complex, these tests as I keep mentioning, will become more and more important. So check it out. We've now written a few more tests, and you should start to see the benefits a little bit more about what tests can do for your actual code quality itself, and it gives you a greater understanding. So not to say you have to test for all of these things if you always know this function is going to be receiving a number, but it could open your mind as to some of the things or potential issues in your code that you might want to watch out for. Because all, in all honesty, you saw how cheap these were, right? These were cheap. We could make a whole nother one if we wanted to, and they ran really quickly. So having cheap tests that are checking for things like that is certainly not an issue. 
So as always, this is Scott with Level Up Tutorials. If you want to help support Level Up Tutorials, head on to leveluptutorials.com and you can become a Level Up Pro by selecting Go Pro and you'll get access to every single one of these series with the teal and purple lock on it that says Pro Exclusive. There is a lot of exclusive excellent content and not only that, but there's exclusive Pro content coming every single month. I'm releasing a new Pro series every single month. And these aren't small series. Uh, these past few have all been over 24 videos long. Uh, the most recent being Vue.js for everyone. And then Pro Gatsby has been a big, big, big hit. Uh, so head on over to leveluptutorials.com forward slash pro to become a pro for 19 bucks a month. Or if subscriptions aren't your thing, you can head on over to the leveluptutorials.com forward slash store and purchase these series outright. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.